This will look a little messy and a little complicated, but um, give me some feedback if this is helpful. I just want to explain the concept of standard error of measurement. And just so you know, just from the get-go, standard error measurement is using the same principles as the normal curve in that we assume that if a person takes a test an infinite number of times is that all of their scores will approximate a normal curve just as if we have gathered a large sample of data of naturally occurring phenomena such as somebody's height. Now I'm going to jump in the screen just to show you some of this. Okay, so we know with the normal curve if we were to get a large sample of people's height that 68% of people would fall plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean, from the average height. Okay, And we can just add these up. We can add these percentages up and see that we get 68%. 95% um, of our sample would fall between minus, a plus and minus two standard deviations of the mean. And again, we can add this up and we'll see that that equates to 95% of our sample. And then between uh, plus, and th plus and minus three standard deviations of the mean is going to capture 99.7% of our sample on a normal curve, and we're talking about people's height. We're going to use the same principle as we're talking about standard error of measurement. And the standard error of measurement is calculated using the standard deviation of the test that we can calculate and the reliability coefficient. So it'll be the standard deviation times the square root of 1 minus the reliability. Now, where this can kind of come in handy, um, if you choose to use this, there are some other ways of measuring standard error measurement. I've been reading some articles about ways that they might do things a little differently, but this is a common one. And it will tell you, when you see a test such as IQ, they're going to give you SEM, standard error measurement, and then they're going to tell you 95% confidence intervals. That's where this is coming from, and it's based on the principle of the normal curve. Okay? So Michael took a test and his true raw score was 50. We're going to plot that right dead in the center as if that's the mean. That's his true raw score. And then we're going to assume if he took this an infinite number of times, the same test an infinite number of times, that his scores will approximate a normal curve, meaning sometimes he may score high, Sometimes he more may score low, but that 68% of the time he's going to be plus or minus one SEM from the mean. We've calculated SEM to be five. Okay, so one SEM above would be 55, two SEMs above 65 and uh, 60, and then 65 would be three SEMs, and then you can see we've just gone down minus one SEM 45, 40, 35. Okay. So where the confidence interval comes from that you see with standard error of measurement is saying that if Michael took this test an infinite number of times, we're 95% confident that his true score would fall between 40 and 60. So please give me some feedback and let me know if this is helpful in understanding just the concept of standard error measurement and confidence intervals, which you are going to see on standardized tests.